um, the chairperson, my colleagues. Uh, my topic is the main aspects of lipid lowering therapy in 2017 and uh, in the context of current guidelines and I also give a brief overview for the future expectations. This slide shows you the main guidelines on the management of dyslipidemia released by various societies in the world. Actually, in 2017, these guidelines have most of sim most similarities than discrepancies. Almost <coughs> all of the guidelines have two common features. First, they all approached an individual according to the cardiovascular risk status, and second, they all acknowledge the importance of the lower is better concept. All guidelines classify individuals according to cardiovascular status as low, moderate, high, and very high risk groups. And to do that, of course, we have to screen all individuals of a certain, after a certain age. For the American guidelines, screening for low, uh, high blood cholesterol is after age 20 of years. For Canadian and for the European guidelines, screening starts after 40 years. And uh, the risk assessment tool, which is used for the calculation of a global cardiovascular risk for a certain individual, is a pooled cohort equation risk score for the American guidelines. For the latest American Association of Endocrinology guidelines, it's Framingham or monthly ethnic uh, studies on atherosclerosis, Reynolds, or uh, UKPDS method. For Canadian guidelines, they again advise using Framingham risk score for their population, and for European populations, score charts are recommended. Which guideline or which tool is used, what, whatever it, which, which one is used, cardiovascular risk assessment should be repeated in every three to five years intervals. Currently, there are several cardiovascular risk estimations methods developed from epidemiologic studies from throughout the world. But among them, uh, the Framingham risk score and the score charts are the most frequently used. Almost all developed methods have the common features of using gender, age, total cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, systolic blood pressure, smoking, diabetes as the variables considers for risk factor stratification, and all try to evaluate a 10-year risk for developing a fatal MI, a fatal stroke, or a non-fatal cardiovascular event. Uh, the comparison of the current risk stratification tools is, the, is beyond the topic of this talk, but we have to remember that only Framingham heart score and score risk charts have an external or international validation. In Europe and also in Turkey, we use score risk chart charts which are available in two versions for low and high risk countries. Turkey belongs to high risk countries. The advantage of using score risk charts is their ability to be recalibrated according to the population's latest cardiovascular mortality data. So many countries prefer to recalibrate score risk chart, eco charts according to their uh, mortality data. Low risk countries, high risk countries, and very high risk countries have done this. And on the right side, you see the score Turkey where we have lots of black boxes indicated in increased cardiovascular risk compared to high-risk populations. Of course, global risk assessment system carries several problems in terms of techniques and their concept, but we have to remember that they are very, very efficient in the evaluation of a patient with low and intermediate risk. 
High-risk individuals are defined almost identically in various guidelines. Diabetes, uh, clinical features and family history of dyslipidemia or hypercholesterolemia, arterial hypertension, and a high-risk score is accepted as high risk for an individual. Also, definition of very high risk individuals are very similar between American, Canadian, and European guidelines. Every individual with a documented clinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular event is accepted as a very high risk individual. And European Society of Cardiology further classifies diabetic individu individuals with target organ damage or those having severe chronic kidney disease as very high-risk individuals. How to screen of a cer for, for a certain individual is uh, actually lipid panel measurement for everyone and calculation of non-HDL cholesterol. Optional tests include lipoprotein B and lipoprotein little a. And lipid testing can be done in non-fasting state for being screening more, for making screening more practical. Management according to risk status is also very simple. Every group is a candidate for lifestyle measurements, but those having high and very high risk should immediately receive pharmacological therapy uh, with lifestyle uh, implementations. The 2013 American guidelines actually simplified uh, the initiation of a statin therapy, and the la later guidelines did not change that approach significantly. Those having an established clinical atherosclerosis, a diabetes, and especially diabetic individuals aged over 40 years, an LDL cholesterol exceeding 190 milligram per deciliter, and those having a high risk according to global risk calculation should receive statins immediately with lifestyle measures. And treat to target uh, approach is accepted by almost all the guidelines recently and the target LDL level is less than 70 milligram per deciliter in almost all guidelines and the latest American Association of Endocrinologist guidelines also defined another group with extreme risk, those having progressive atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, including unstable angina uh, after achieving an LDL cholesterol of uh, less than 90 milligram per deciliter. And for these individuals, the target LDL cholesterol should be less than <coughs> 55 milligram per deciliter. Of course, in Glagov and Fourier trials, we had seen that much lower LDL levels, levels like 36 milligram per deciliter, are very effective and safe for the individuals. But for recommending a lower LDL target, we need the completion of longer guidelines, a longer time, and uh, completion of ongoing trials. But when we look at the European Atherosclerosis Society Consensus Report, we see a very straight line uh, in the association between magnitude of exposure to low LDL and the risk for developing cardiovascular events. And actually the lowest LDL seems to be around zero, uh, which may be again beneficial and safe. For monitoring, uh, the reassessment after initiation of medical therapy is uh, after six to eight weeks, according to almost all guidelines, and uh, two to s 12 months ter intervals thereafter. Transaminases should be measured before and at the third month after treatment, and should be repeated annually according to the decision of the physician. Factors to be considered include lifestyle change, uh, lifestyle statin intolerance, control of other risk factors, statin, uh, non-statin medications, and referral to lipid specialists uh, when the target could not be uh, reached. Q 
Current combination therapy can be summarized as on this slide. Uh, in patients using statin, when there is intolerance or uh, inability to reach the target LDL level, to reach and target LDL, azetimibe is the second option agent followed by bile acid sequestrants or PCSK9 inhibitors. And if, again, LDL cholesterol cannot be, uh, target LDL <coughs> cannot be reached, referral to a lipid specialist is advocated. For those having uh, a non-HDL cholesterol, not a target, co uh, combination with fibrates, uh, especially in those having a high triglycerides, especially a triglyceride level exceeding 500 milligram per deciliter, or omega-3 fish oil is recommended. What, whichever agent is used, each agent uh, is successful if the amount of the LDL level decreased. So uh, the combination should also focus on the level of LDL decrease too. And slightly for future expectations, unfortunately in the current guidelines, individuals at low and moderate risk status are not uh, robustly represented. And all guidelines, especially the European guidelines, exclude roughly 25% individuals from uh, lipid lowering therapy. Very possibly, the precision medicine initiative, which will be the future of risk stratification, will be very helpful to overcome that problem. Uh, precision medicine initiative challenges the one-size-fits-all medicine and the current stratified medicine approach, and it takes uh, genome, transcriptome, proteome, and metabolome, uh, these factors into account, and of course the combination of these factors and, and uh, environment is very important in the determination of global risk status of a per certain individual. Surely the timely alterations in the risk status and all of these complicated data should be combined as a big data analyzers uh, in future. Uh, management uh, for the future, of course, in the next guidelines, we may expect having HOPE pre-trial, Fourier trial, <coughs> and the lately uh, presented pure trial for lifestyle uh, management and reveal trial uh, to be included in the guidelines. But in the more future guidelines, we may observe genetically directed medical therapy and uh, especially in the late, lately we have seen lots of lots of trials including genetic risk score of a certain individual and the effect of certain uh, antilipidemic agents. Of course, novel antilipidemics is a far way uh, to go, and uh, we are meeting with several kinds of agents, and lots of agents are uh, under production. Uh, so, in conclusion, the future of lipid lowering will be as life in Elysium May, I don't know whether you have seen that movie before. Uh, the movie uh, was about uh, life 150 years later, where the world is suffering from pollution, overpopulation, and wealthy people are living in a uh, artificially created pla uh, pla planet. And in this planet, rich people had tanning beds where every disease practically could be cured ver uh, very simple by just lying in the bed. So future of <coughs> atherosclerosis and prevention will be something like that, and hopefully not in a special planet and on on. Thank you very much. It may not be a practical point to reach for everyone, but it is possible to reach by the current uh, agents. And uh, r recently we have seen lots of lots of trials uh, who did uh, soft, uh, soft studies and showed that a level less than 
20 milligram per deciliter is both beneficial and also safe uh, for cardiovascular diseases. Thank you.